Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, Elon Musk. These are all successful tech entrepreneurs that everyone loves. They're hot. They're cool. They're hot and cool and everyone loves them. And I've never heard anyone say a bad thing. But what do they lack? They're not on TikTok. That's for sure. I, I, I had to check. And that's where this guy comes in. Today, we're talking about TikTok's titan of toxic tech, Ethan Kaiser. Ethan is a software engineer slash entrepreneur slash heartthrob who posts viral videos on TikTok about how he's hacking social media and dating apps to get famous and find love. The only problem? Nothing. Unless you consider the everything about it. Something really toxic that you used to do or you still do. When you have a girlfriend, you usually ask them for their Wi-Fi password when you spend the night. And when you have access to the router, it's really simple to actually check to see what other devices have connected. By doing so, you can actually determine who's been there. And you can also set this up so you can check this remotely. So let's say she might say, oh, I'm staying in tonight. Well, I can just easily check remotely to see if her device is still in her home. If it's not, that means she's lying. If another device comes online, maybe she's seeing someone. Ew. By the way, never do that. Never do it. It's not a tech hack. It's abusive behavior. It's stalking. It's a betrayal of trust and privacy. It's not FBI level 1000. It's DiGiorno. And by DiGiorno, I mean fucked up. <laughs> Sorry, DiGiorno. Sorry, DiGiorno got kind of caught in the crossfire there. <laughs> So many comments saying he's like Joe or this is problematic, but if he was a woman, we're gonna be like, go off queen. No, if anyone did this, it would be bad. If a woman did this, we would be like, go on queen, go on to jail. Okay, maybe jail is a little harsh. Maybe go on queen and think about what you've done. <laughs> Reconsider this queen, <laughs> you're better than this actually. I think this is better than say, trying to go through someone's phone. <laughs> Just be careful because family might stop by or a roommate's friend. Uh, no, it's actually exactly the same as going through someone's phone. Just because you did it with technology doesn't make it any less uh, invasive. Just say invasive. Invading someone's privacy. I think a lot of his videos like this are uh, creepy and weird, but people play it off as a joke because like tech is magic to them. Unfortunately for me, I have a similar professional background to this guy. So I understand how he's doing all his cool tech hacks. And uh, it's just strange. <laughs> it's just weird. Don't do it. When you are a crypto millionaire, but still hate people. All for me. Cool, man. Now I want to dress this up top because I think it's important. Uh, however you feel about watching this guy's stuff or about my commentary on this guy's content, please do not harass him or reach out in any way. It's antithetical to what we're doing here. It is going to be viewed as harassment. It's going to make me look bad because uh, it, my audience and their behavior is a reflection of the community that I've cultivated. So be on your best behavior and let's keep our criticism contained to to, to this video. It's my intention to uh, do my little jokes and gaffes and goofs and critiques in good faith. And uh, I would like to keep it that way. Now I do understand this guy has a million followers on TikTok and that is obviously a platform worthy of, of goofing and critiquing, but no one deserves harassment. So don't. Okay, so Ethan's bio reads, Ethan Kaiser, big brain. That is because his brain is so large, because his hacks are so cool. He's a nerd like me. He lives in Miami, not like me. I left Florida. We've got tech slash big brain humor, just as a reminder uh, of how, you know, the, the humor is big brain. So big, in fact, that I may be misunderstanding it. This whole video may be me just not getting the joke. Remember kids, if it's a joke, then you can't be held accountable for anything. Um, it's just a prank, bro. And then finally it says rebound app link. So he has an app. He's got an app. There's an app for that. You know, he's got a few apps actually, and we'll be talking about some of them today. But first a word from today's sponsor, Notion. Are you having trouble keeping track of your life as a viral superstar entrepreneur? I know I literally am, but for real, I do need help staying organized. And I do that with Notion. Notion is a project management app where you can do it all. You can take notes, manage tasks, set goals, and so much more. And it's perfect for working with a team as all of your stuff 
is easily discoverable all in one place. I use Notion. I and my team of misfits have been using Notion for the better part of the last three years, and we love it. It's where I write my scripts, track video production, and manage brand opportunities like this one. Notion is customizable, so it's easy to tailor the tool to your needs, and they make it super easy to share your work both with your team and to the outsiders. I've used a lot of task management software, both for myself and with teams, and I've been a part of a number of different teams of different types, especially back when I used to work a nine to five. But Notion is by far my favorite as I am still using it after all these years. And that's because everything just lives all in one place and it's easy to keep everybody informed. Yeah, so I've got demo written here as like a little <laughs> reminder to just show you, show you around a little bit. For myself, um, a lot of our work lives here in the production schedule and I can manage you know, the process of how things are things are going because I, it, it's very hard for me to stay organized. Um, so this tool helps out a lot. Uh, this, this video, you know, it's getting close. It's getting close to be ready. We've got some videos coming up in the pipeline. I'm gonna hop on over to completed scripts. You can see the stuff that I've been working on you know, like we, things, things happen to get these videos made and it starts with Notion. If you're looking for a product to help you organize your business or your creativity, I recommend clicking the link in the description and signing up for Notion today. Thanks again to Notion for sponsoring this video. Let's get started with the Rebound app. I'll let Ethan describe it in his own words. Did anyone else plan on staying single after their toxic ex, but ended up finding their soulmate? You might be wondering how many soulmates who made videos to the sound are still together six months later. I wasn't really wondering that, no. Usually when people post stuff like this on social media, I just go cool and I scroll past it and I don't make it my mission <laughs> to find out more. But I guess this was like a trend where people use the sound to post about their soulmate, toxic ex to soulmate. So they're saying that like they were in a bad relationship and then they found something that was healthier for them. I don't see that. I don't see the issue for that. I mean, some people are more public with relationship stuff. I'm not, but I, okay, you know, whatever, to each their own. Of the 500 most popular videos, I track the soulmates relationships on Instagram. And what I found is a game changer. To track the relationships, I wrote some code and made an app called Rebound. Here it tracks in real time whether or not people are dating based on whether they follow each other. And to track a new relationship, all I need to do is put in their Instagram accounts and hit subscribe. What does this accomplish? Why does it bother you so much that someone is expressing their love on the dancing app? Especially in a context where they were in a bad relationship and then they found a good one. Is that so wrong? And hit subscribe and bingo, I'm now tracking whether they follow each other. And sometimes things don't work out and they break up and unfollow each other and I get a push notification. Nice! <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Oh man, I love pushing notifications. I especially love them when they're about love not working out. But whatever, people are nosy. I'm nosy. I just don't need a push notification. <laughs> and minutes after they broke up, I would slide into their DMs. And nearly 30% of them responded to my DM. Okay, so I, I need to believe that you are not just making this app to find vulnerable people to DM. Like, it has to just be for the bit. It has to just be for the content. Because if that were the case, it would be really fucked up, I think. Not only were most of them not soulmates, they were also already moving on responding to DMs. They were already moving on responding to DMs. The DM in question was, hey, I saw your TikTok videos and had to reach out. You are funny. That's a compliment. Why would you assume that ha that is romantic at all? <laughs> like, especially if this person's like a content creator, especially, especially because you are a TikTok creator, a larger TikTok creator, complimenting a smaller TikTok creator. Like, I don't understand why that means that they're moving on. Hey, just wanted to say I really like your videos. You're pretty funny. Oh my God, thank you. That's so kind. Moving on a little quick, aren't we? What? No, I was just thanking you for your comp. No judgment, no judgment. Nice videos though. Thanks. Disgusting. Not only were most of them not soulmates. He really has to like dig in that they're not soulmates. It's like, dude, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's like a superlative. Some people say that. It's not like something to be disproven after every breakup. The divorce rate is 50%, right? Like, and, and you're talking about like 40% of these relationships not being together after six months. I'm like, 
okay, this isn't new. This isn't news. The news is that that people are excited about relationships that ultimately don't pan out. You got him there. Can you imagine dating this dude and simply suggesting that you might be soulmates? Babe, there's this trend on TikTok where people are posting their soulmates and I'm gonna post you cause I love you. The data actually disagrees with the concept of soulmates. I, I just love you. There's a high statistical probability that you won't forever though. Okay, I don't understand why you would say that. Facts don't care about your feelings, Marie. I, uh, I have a graph. So people are mad at me for uploading a video exposing all the fake soulmate relationships on TikTok. I just wanna point out I'm not mad at this man. I'm making fun of something he did because I thought it was clownish behavior, you know? Like, the, the, there's a difference between being mad. I just want to sort of point that out because there's going to be a lot of, oh, you're just mad or you're taking something out of context. I'm doing my best to give the appropriate and relevant context. And also, you know, all of this stuff is still is still available. I'm not, like, knowingly withholding context so that it fits my narrative, I simply cannot condense literally everything this man has ever said or did on the internet um, into into this video. So, you know, Ethan, if you ever watch this video and you feel like something's missing context, it is not my intention and it's my sincerest apology. I wanted to know if there were actually gonna be soulmates, so I wrote some code. I made a whole now app just for shit. this. And like 40% of the soulmates broke up in a few months. But people from those videos were saying this was creepy and that it was stalkerish. I don't know, what do you guys think? I agree. For what it's worth, I think that some of the concepts that this guy's playing around with are interesting, but then he completely loses me in the implementation. Uh, so for example, um, this next app of his. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be super famous where everyone wants to be around you? You're the life of the party. <laughs> Hell yeah, I have. Well, I built an app that makes it look like you have thousands of viewers on IG Live. I then took my clout to a Miami beach club to see what would happen. Why are there so many people on here? Guys, we're out here right now. So essentially he built an app that pretends to be Instagram Live so that he can walk around with his phone pretending like he's live streaming and lie to people about who he is. <laughs> it's the perfect crime. Nothing starts a new relationship off right like lying about your identity. Let's get on, guys. So he hangs out at this, I don't know, pool party thing. Oh boy, I don't really know that. And that's cool, I guess. He's always got to have his phone out, always got to be streaming <laughs> so that people don't forget he's famous. Uh, but then he goes to a club that's sold out and and waves around his magic clout wand. Right now we're at capacity. I'm only letting... Um, so I have um, 45,000 people watching on Instagram Live. We would love your shout out. I'll have you in the back. Okay, All right, let's go. But it works. It, it works. Sorry, the camera's right here. It works. <laughs> I mean, as long as it isn't staged, it works, which I have no reason to believe that Ethan would socially engineer us. He's never done that before. Side note, if you ever see me flashing around my internet numbers anywhere in real life, you have permission to murder me in cold blood. <laughs> if that's what it comes to, then I deserve, I asked for it. My absolute favorite part of this whole thing is what the chat is saying, because uh, you'll remember he is not actually streaming on Instagram Live. Uh, and so he has to make it seem like he has a vibrant, live, active chat. Just chatting it up while, while Ethan's out partying in Miami. And <laughs> I have to read you the, the chat messages. He's programmed like 10 phrases to repeat in his chat. And it paints the saddest picture of all time. Guess who my favorite creator is? Who is your favorite creator? Have you ever heard of Ethan Kaiser? I hear he's a great creator. It sounds, it sounds like a children's poem. Um, <laughs> do you go live often? I like what I'm seeing. Look, I'm not trying to take take too much away from uh, from developers, from programmers and stuff. But what he has essentially built, I you know, app gets thrown around a lot. Like it's a huge, like it's a huge operation. He built a screenshot with more steps. Can we be honest about this? <laughs> it's a cam review and then a little scrolling chat and then a number of fake viewers um, on the screen. So I do want you to imagine that he's just showing a screenshot of like his of his follower count around places and people are just like oh my god but you know because it because people aren't used to people walking up to them and lying it does like it, it it works to some extent because why would someone do that why would someone pretend to be famous just to like have people like them that's like a sad thing to do it, it, some might 
think. Do you go live often? I like what I'm seeing. And then the same profile picture, but with a different name. Would you ever go on, on the same screen? Would you ever go on a date with a viewer? Will you adopt me? He had to write all of these himself. And that is the funniest thing in the world to me. <laughs> it's like, it's just kind of like dystopian and kind of sad. Um, and I mean, I, I feel like that's super mean to say, but it's just a weird op. It's like the optics are just odd, you know? It's just funny to see what he thinks it's like to be a famous streamer. You know what I mean? And of course, when staple conversation topics like, who are you come up, <laughs> he, he has a response. I don't, I never I tell people in person my follow or who I am. I, I never tell people in person my follow or who I am. You're not Batman. <laughs> there's like, there's only so many people that can command 50,000 like concurrence on an Instagram live stream. Can I get into the club, please? I'm very famous. I'm sorry, who are you? I never reveal my secrets. <laughs> Just to put things into perspective, when Drake went live on Instagram after the Raptors won the NBA finals, he was getting like 75K concurrent viewers on Instagram Live. And he is also one of the biggest celebrities on the platform. So I just, uh, I feel like most people that big are also people who would be recognized in person, you know? Uh, but what do I know? It took me and my team to the VIP in the club and like and follow to see what happens next. Okay, so he took his team, his new gang, to the VIP in the club. And what happens next? Well, I... I'm gonna watch this YouTube video. What's up guys, it's Ethan, and I wanna be a celebrity. I want the fame, I want the clout, but unfortunately I can't sing or dance. Have you tried making goofy commentary videos on YouTube? Eh? So watching the YouTube video, it kind of makes me more upset <laughs> because it's like, oh, here's how I duped a restaurant owner into thinking I was important and so he gave me special treatment. And I get it, like, you know, it's a commentary. Should we be giving special treatment to people who we think are famous or whatever? I don't know. I don't think anybody should be getting special treatment, but the fact that you're like lying and getting the special treatment as like a gotcha, like doesn't feel good. It just feels gross. I don't know. You know, to his credit in his YouTube video, he does shout out the spots. So that's not nothing. And I think that, that, you know, credit where credit's due. I think it's good that he did that. And for our last act with Mr. Kaiser, I ask you, how do you get a date? Do you put yourself out there and be yourself in a kind and respectful manner? Do you have a friend set you up? Do you use a dating app? Or do you make an app to lie? Okay, um, okay, so make an app to lie is where I'm leaning because that's kind of his MO. Um, Maybe I should film a friend. Uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go with teach a computer to impersonate a serial killer from an early 2000s psychological thriller. Final answer. Wow. Uh, it's, how did you know that? Now this is gonna sound completely unrelated, but American Psycho is a psychological thriller slash horror movie from the year 2000 about Patrick Bateman, a wealthy investment banker in New York, played by Christian Bale, who hides the fact that he's a serial murderer with his status and charm. Just thought you should know. Wikipedia says the satirical film blends horror and black comedy to mock 1980s yuppie culture and consumerism. That was random. All right, let's watch Ethan's TikTok about dating 50,000 women in New York City. Step one, I reverse engineered all the major dating apps and stored 49,000 profiles in a database. I'm gonna stop you there. Why did you do that? I have to blur some of this TikTok because he just scrolls through his matches and includes their full ass names. There's phone numbers in here. This is, the hell are you doing, man? We're gonna assume that that is a careless mistake. As for what he's actually talking about, I get it, I guess. You know, dating is difficult. I've done it. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. That's why I don't leave this room anymore and I just talk to you guys. Is this against the terms of service of Hinge? Probably, but all's fair in love and app. I then wrote a program to swipe right on all of them and got around 5,000 matches. You know what? 5,000 out of 50,000, that's a 10% match rate, dude. You could have just gone through using the app regular style and had a grand old time instead of this. <laughs> instead of what, instead of th whatever this is. And to speak to all 5,000 women, I built an artificial intelligence based on the personalities of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho and James Bond. Ah, 
Ah, see, now you're happy you got a recap of American Psycho. Let me get this straight. You could create an AI to respond with quotes from any character across film and television, and you chose the two least eligible bachelors possible? If your goal is to date women, I don't understand why you wouldn't choose characters from movies that women actually romanticize, you know, like Ryan Gosling in The Notebook or ratatouille don't get weird y'all are romanticizing ratatouille and it's time to admit it there's a rat making your food and you're like cool your artificial intelligence used movie quotes to speak on my behalf for example would you like to accompany me to dinner if you're not doing anything sure where do you want to go anywhere you want just say it i can get us in anywhere aren't these the things that he says before he kills you <laughs> like isn't this weird like why would what is happening is the joke haha -ha, Haha, ha, you fell for me using murderer quotes. Let's get married. Also, not to victim blame, but I don't know that I would want to date someone who failed the Turing test. But I also wouldn't want to put my potential partner <laughs> in a in a in a situation where they may not know that I'm a computer. You know, these are 2022 problems. So these are not really things that we've talked about too much. But yeah, can my date solve a captcha? <laughs> you know, like these are these are maybe concerns I didn't know I had, but now questions that I'm asking gonna ask. I'm gonna start every date with a little bit of a captcha. Tell me which of these are cars. Where do you want to go? Anywhere you want. Just say it and I can get us in anywhere. <laughs> it's just the manic energy of this. It doesn't matter to me. What's your favorite drink? Vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. Would you like to see my apartment? Not on the first date. This poor girl. All right, all right, all right. I think that it should be illegal to use this many exclamation points on a dating app for any reason. Just the second you hit that third exclamation point, jail. Like and follow for more big brain hacks. Ugh. I'm not trying to make up things that I don't like about these videos, but like, look what I did. And then you like show your girlfriend or something like ugh, i don't know to the credit of the random people who he is accosting with serial killer movie quotes he i don't think many of them did like it like in his video about this there are more examples of people not being into it now i've been on these dating apps before and i've had very little success where even if i match with someone i usually get ghosted <laughs> and this is my villain origin story this is one thing i will show out of context because i don't think you need the context um he's just talking about like how he's like designed this this algorithm and when i was watching this i like groaned audibly we now know that everyone that comes after them is also below our standards so we can just delete them and only focus on the bunch we like it's important to note that when setting my standard i made sure that i was sober and had no other substance in use as this historically has uh skewed my data negatively <laughs> <laughs> gross dude the sad part about this is that like a lot of people are really into it and i just think that i just don't uh, i i un okay i understand why people are into it because dating is hard and that's true it's i you know i concede date, dating apps it's like very discouraging it's very difficult to date but i just don't think this is the way i don't think this is this is how to do it for me it calls to mind that old adage just because you can doesn't mean you should. It just feels ethically wrong to me. I feel like if these women were aware of what was going on, obviously they wouldn't consent to it. And it just makes me feel uncomfortable. Also, what's the game plan here? Do you never reveal your methods? Or like what happens when you show up to the date and you're like not a complete tool? Unless, like what do you say to your grandkids when they ask how Mima and Peepaw hooked up? <laughs> <laughs> I tricked your me mob with a highly sophisticated dating algorithm. What did you say? <laughs> well, I said, uh, I have all the characteristics of a human being, blood, flesh, skin, hair, but not a single clear identifiable emotion except for greed and disgust. Something horrible is happening inside of me and I don't know why. It's a little alarming how excited people are about it, but I, I think it's because, you know, people just they want to find love and they don't know what to do, you know. Bro, the personality of Bond and Bateman? <laughs> Goat. I can see it all now. Even after they all find out that you did this and I was totally genuine, you will still be the preferred one. FML. That's what we're dealing with here. That's... 
and I feel bad. You know what I mean? But this, I don't think this is something that everyone should aspire to or admire. There's a reason that people aren't doing this. It's not that for lack of the skill or, you know, like ability to put two and two together. It's just kind of a creepy thing to do. Look, I'm going to call it here. And look, I, I don't get to decide what's right and wrong in this life. Uh, I just think that this is a little goofy and more than a little goofy in some, in some cases, creepy, you know, is a word that I might use. Uh, toxic. Sure. I think that he's kind of adopted that word himself. I think that he knows how it's going to be perceived, but he's doing it anyway. Uh, but whatever. I think it's, I think it's kind of goofy. I think it's kind of clownish. Um, <laughs> I think it's morally gray at best. Uh, s some of these things, you know, the good news is I don't get to decide everything in the world. Um, but I did, you know, want to kind of throw my two cents in because people really do kind of look past the the ethics of things when they're promising something that we want. I hope you enjoyed this video if that was possible. And I will see you next time. is a psychological thriller slash horror movie from the year 2000 about an investment baker in New York. Uh, Patrick Bateman.